thought we were going to talk about something meaningful? Well, college is a thing and so is homework. So this is gonna be a change of pace until you SHARE MY VIDEOS WITH YOUR FRIENDS but until I have subscribers in the triple digits, let's talk about board games. This is Gloom. Now, why is Gloom a great game? Well, if you stop asking questions, you might get an answer, Mr. Strawman. Well, first and foremost, as something that a lot of board games lack in today's market, it's simplistic. Just compare it to some other random game like... Uh... This one. Small world. More like small dick! That sure was overwhelming, right? Well, not for Gloom. It's just a deck of cards. You shuffle them, you deal them, you play them. Simple enough, right? There's no setup, there's no 50 pound rule book, there's no tokens! Best of all, it's small enough to fit in your damn pocket so you can take it places. Like your school, or Starbucks, or your toilet. Cards against humanity can't do that shit! Now I bet you're wondering what business I have praising a game for being small, when I just called out another for having a SMALL DICK! To which I respond, WHAT DID I JUST SAY ABOUT ASKING QUESTIONS?! The cards are also pretty cool too. They're made of this cool translucent material that can be bent more than the average card while retaining its shape. Wouldn't recommend testing their limits though. AND THEY'RE WATERPROOF! You know, in case you wanted to play this game by the pool with your friends. But we're not here to have a fun time. It's your goth clothes, your black eyeliner, your edgy theme music. If you're messing with me, I am a dangerous weapon. I am the sharpest of blades, I'll cut you down in a second. Cause it's time to play Gloom. The base game can be played with two to four players. Each player has a depressingly morbid family, made up of four to five members, each with their own morbidly depressing flavor text. Just thought I'd let you know in case the title of this game made you think that this was gonna be all sunshine and rainbows. Fuck no, Gloom is morbid and I love it. During your turn you can play two cards, and there are three different types that can be played. Easiest ones to understand are event cards. You play them, you resolve them, you move on with your life. What little bit you have left on this planet. The most commonly played card is going to be the modifier. When you play one of these, you'll play them on any family member in the game. Now the important thing to understand about Gloom is that winning is losing, and losing is winning. Pretty simple. Simple, right? It's so simple anyone with a grasp of Kingdom Hearts lore can understand it. But in case JRPG plots are too complex for you, let me explain in terms you'll understand. Low numbers are good, high numbers are bad. That's right, you want to make bad things happen to your family, and good things happen to everyone else's. It's fantastic. Each modifier also comes with a description of what that card is and some flavor text, allowing you to weave a story about what happens to the family member being modified. So you can describe in lengthy detail how your family member was beaten by beggars while everyone else went to the circus. And if you can't see why this is the best part of the game, then clearly your lipstick isn't dark enough. So go watch Table Tops video on Gloom and find out for yourself. Some modifiers also have certain abilities that resolve when or as they're played, and the negativity of these effects generally correspond to the number score. So, while you may be getting a great score from when Grandpa was ruined by rum, it also means that you won't be drawing any cards at the end of your turn. Conversely, playing a high scored card will give that player an advantage, like an increased hand size or ANOTHER FUCKING DRAW TOO! <laughs> Sorry, I was <sighs> having Uno flashbacks. Uh, where, um, where was I? Then there's the big one, the untimely death card. Because as if this game wasn't morbid enough, you can also kill your entire family. I repeat, this is a game where you get to make terrible things happen to your family and then kill them all. I fucking love this game! Once you play an untimely death card, be it on your family member or another, that member is dead and no further modifiers can be played on them. You know, in case the fact that they're dead wasn't enough of an indicator that their life couldn't possibly get any worse. Well, I can tell you how it could get worse. They could be brought back! You can only play an untimely death at the beginning of your turn, and only as the first card you played. So no stealing points only to drop them out during the same turn. That's a no-no. And you know what we do to no-no doers? <laughs> Same thing we do to everyone else, we make them subscribe to my channel. The one thing I really like about this game is the use of translucent cards. That's not something that's new to card games, but it's not exactly something you see a lot either. 
If you've ever played Redekai, I'm so sorry. When a score is covered up by another score, that becomes a new score. But so long as it isn't covered up, the score still remains, adding an additional layer of strategy to the game. The game ends when an entire family is dead. The players then add up their scores, and whoever has the lowest, and by extension the most depressing story, wins. Do yourself and your friends a favor and go buy this game. What's that? You don't have the money to keep up with expensive-ass board games? Well, that's the best part of Gloom. You can get it for roughly 20 bucks, sometimes even less. You can afford that, right? Well, maybe not, but here's one thing you can afford to do. Share this video with someone else. You want me to make more videos, right? We'll get the word out so maybe I can monetize this one day. And while you're at it, follow me on Twitter. Come on, like you pay attention to the 100 plus people you already follow on Twitter, you have no excuse. And speaking of no excuse, have an excellent day and stay platinum.